All right, what is going on, everybody? Uh, t welcome to Tactical Thursday, everybody in Zoom, uh, in the webinar, everybody on YouTube. I'm glad that you could show up and spend a little time this Thursday evening uh, chatting about tactical arbitrage and online arbitrage. This evening, we are going to be talking about tactical arbitrage and online arbitrage in Q4, uh, especially uh, with Black Friday coming up. We've got Cyber Monday. There should be deals galore uh, across the wide world web that we should be able to snap up. Um, and we're going to uh, do some Q&A. Uh, I, I don't think that there's a lot to say about Black Friday and Cyber Monday and really I mean, it, it, it goes much further than that these days. I, uh, was it Target had a, like, like a pre-Black Friday sale already? Um, and I've seen, you know, a bunch of ads out there. So we're going to talk about where you can kind of keep your finger on the pulse of the sales that are going on. And then some of the things that you might need to do outside of just tactical arbitrage. Uh, but at least you'll be able to sit at home in front of the fireplace and... Uh, order product rather than going off and fighting the crowds, dealing with the masses, and possibly um, having to punch someone in uh, in a crowded market. So, um, if you are joining us on YouTube, do me a huge solid and gently murder the like button. Uh, it is for the YouTube algorithm, bumps this video up, and makes me want to create some more videos. And if you are new here, please hit the little bell. Uh, and subscribe uh, because we do put out content every single week. Uh, hopefully in 2020, that'll be going to twice a week um, as I get some more ideas. So uh, let's go ahead and dive in. We've got a few questions. Uh, one of them, um, let's talk a little news before we really start rolling into online arbitrage and things. Um, but everyone saw uh, that Nike has decided to pull away from selling on Amazon or selling to Amazon, if you will. And of course, rumors and theories have um, abounded, if you will. Uh, and someone asked me, what do you think about uh, Nike leaving Amazon? Hey, Rita, what's going on over on YouTube? Uh, so the Nike was selling... Uh, to Amazon as a distributor or a wholesale or a brand partnership for the past two years. And when it happened, everyone was like, oh, well, there goes Nike and nobody's going to be able to sell Nike anymore. Um, you know, there goes the whole shoe market on Amazon. <clears throat> but not everything got gated. Some things did get gated, you know. Uh, and there were some products that couldn't be sold. However, reselling Nike, um, maybe it slowed down a bit, but I, I know plenty of people who continued to grow their business when the bulk of their um, their sales were Nike shoes, Nike clothing, and things like that. Now that Nike has pulled away from Amazon, my theory is that the Nike market will get better on Amazon for resellers. Uh, now, not necessarily for the consumer because the amount of product available or the uh, variations of product available may dwindle a bit because, I mean, it's kind of hard to go out and buy, you know, a Nike that sells for 180 bucks and flip it on Amazon, especially if it's not a, uh, you know, a hot new release, you know, you can of course sell it, you know, sell it for more. Like I just bought my son, uh, these, um, how, what were they called? These SpongeBob square pants, Nikes that dropped. Now I could, I could have put those up on Amazon and probably sold them for double or maybe triple. Uh, but not every shoe is going to be like that. Okay. Uh, the, the shoes you can go purchase at, um, the outlets and TJ Maxx and all those other places. Uh, however, I, I would imagine, I don't think that Amazon will gate Nike to sellers. I think they're going to want to keep that uh, chunk of business um, in-house. So I think that they're going to want the shoes to be on Amazon. So I think it may actually get better. Now, 
what does Nike do in response is the question. Does Nike hire uh, Voris or IP Shark or one of these other uh, jerk companies, if you will, um, and start sending out IP complaints? I don't know. Hopefully they're too big and they don't care. Uh, and they feel that their own marketing dollars on um, social media platforms and uh, direct to consumer advertising will be able to take care of them and they'll be able to get the market share that they want. Um, so I, I don't know. I don't know. Uh, I'd like to think that Nike will just say, all right, well, that was a great experiment. It was two years and now we're just going to focus over here and we're just not going to worry about Amazon anymore. Uh, but who knows, to be quite honest, it'll be interesting to see what happens. Uh, but I don't think anything huge will happen for three, six, maybe 12 months down the road uh, because, you know, you're dealing with uh, corporate uh, Goliath and they just don't necessarily move that fast. Uh, let's see. Greg, I've been most of the Tactical Tuesday videos, learned a lot. Thank you. Uh, would you benefit from, ta okay, uh, so someone who's been here for Tactical Tuesdays, Tactical Thursdays, would you still benefit from Tactical Academy? In my opinion, yes. Um, Tactical Academy still does dive a little bit deeper than we can go in an hour every week, especially when I'm answering Q&A and things like that. Uh, it's also in a much more, you don't hear me going off on tangents. Uh, so it's, it's ready to go. And actually next week, I'm going to be sitting down before Black Friday. I'm going to be redoing some of the videos and adding some new ones, I hope, uh, before Black Friday. And then Black Friday, there will probably be some sort of sale or something, of course, because it is, tis the season. Um, but yes, I still think it, there is, there's one or there's two modules inside of Tactical Arbitrage Academy that are actually about Keepa that I believe are worth the money for Tactical Academy all by itself. And then of course we've got discounts and things set up um, that help uh, you know battle the uh, the pain of paying for a course. Um, but I don't like pushing Tactical Academy on everybody, so that's uh, that's all I'll say about it there. Uh, James, what's going on, man? Glad you guys, glad you're here tonight. Uh, Scott, did I send something out about Amazon restrictions? Oh yeah, since we're talking about Amazon news, um, there was a mass ungating on Amazon this past week. Uh, and hopefully nobody here has went out and bought product that they were gated in on Monday and not gated in on Tuesday or Wednesday, whenever that mass ungating happened, um, because that seemed like a glitch. Uh, Nike was one of the brands uh, that became ungated for a lot of people who are currently gated in Nike. Um, so, and that's like the second or third time it's happened over the past three months. So somebody probably spilled coffee on their keyboard and, uh, and mass ungated everybody. Uh, but hopefully uh, you'll get lucky and have a few things stick. Claudio, hey, Marianne, how's it going? Uh, Claudio, how to ungate beauty products on Amazon. Any help? Um, shoot me an email at chris at cleartheshelf.com and I may be able to, um, I may be able to uh, point you in the right direction for getting ungated in beauty, maybe. Uh, let's see, Steve, uh, Steve says, let me push tactical Academy Academy for you. Just join. I, I appreciate that, man. That means a lot. <clears throat> Aaron says the cat walked on the keyboard, which ungated everybody. It's always the cat. I I'm sure it is. Um, the 1769. What do you think about Nike leaving Amazon? We just, just talked about that. Um, do you use virtual payment cards? Uh, I use a credit card. Uh, I don't, I don't typically use virtual payment cards. I have when I have been, um, blocked from a site here or there, I have gone out and gotten uh, not necessarily a virtual payment card, but I've gotten myself some, uh, visa gift cards and used along with uh, a backup address. 
but I've never never really used a virtual payment card like like the Cash App virtual card or anything like that. Frank wants to get ungated in thongs. That should be that should be easy. Actually, you know, back back when I got ungated in shoes and clothing, like all you had to do was I think fix some pictures or something it was really easy. All right. <clears throat> so uh, I do want to do a, a fairly large Q&A tonight. So if you guys have questions, please don't hesitate to drop them. And I will make sure that we get all of the Q&A. Uh, before we get rolling, let me actually, let me share my screen. Uh, let's see this one. There we go. All right. Uh, how do you get the Zoom link? Uh, you can sign up at cleartheshelf.com um, forward slash tactical Tuesday registration. And what that will do is that will sign you up to the weekly email. Um, uh, it'll sign you up to the weekly email that lets you know, hey, here's uh, here's the Zoom room and um, you know, here's your reminder every single week and stuff, stuff like that. Um, Watermelon92 says, I'm ungated in Nike. Do you think they will take all the listings down? Uh, I have about 9,000 in inventory lab. No, I don't think that, that Amazon is going to take all the listings down. The breakup has been public in the news, but it doesn't seem that Nike or Amazon has really said anything. Nike just said, hey, we're, we're stopping selling to Amazon to focus on our own uh, e-commerce. Amazon hasn't really, I haven't read anything that Amazon has said anything about it. Uh, and my opinion would be that Amazon has too many Nike sales, both before and after getting direct dis distribution from Nike, that they're not going to want to shut it down. Uh, you know, they don't, and they don't have to, they're big enough that if Nike was like, Hey, shut down Nike, uh, Amazon and Jeff would probably be like, why don't you go take a long walk off a short pier? Um, so I don't foresee that happening now. Maybe I'm going to eat crow in six months or 12 months. Uh, but I'm pretty sure that selling Nike on Amazon is going to stay healthy for the foreseeable future. Uh, hey, Chris, do you, how do you utilize the restriction check checker on TA when you let your VAs go through your results? Uh, do you give them your seller account as well? Uh, Mike, that's a great question. What I would suggest is um, I would give them limited access to your seller central account. Um, and I would, I would go in and um, uh, yeah, just give them limited access as, as limited as you can so that they can use that restriction checker. Uh, cause they do have to be, they are going to have to be signed in to your account. Um, I mean, I've, I'll have to check what you need to give them cause I haven't, I haven't really looked into that. Uh, so it's better for third party cause, it, uh, yeah. So yeah, my opinion is it's better that, you know, that Nike's not in it, I think. Um, yeah, and Frank's right. The Nike CEO was the eBay CEO. Uh, he wants a better deal and walking away is the best. Ni yeah, Nike, Nike is not going to go anywhere. Like even in the second, I mean, they want to be able to sell shoes in the secondary market. It cleans up, you know, products that, that, need to get cleaned up. So Nike's just, it's not going to go anywhere. All right. So before we get into this, of course, we've got giveaways this week. Uh, we're going to do one Tactical Arbitrage Academy. Uh, we've got three um, uh, sets of 100 poly bags from my good friend, Jonathan at ilovesupplies.com. We've got two copies of IP Alert and two Tactical Arbitrage t-shirts, of course. Uh, so if you want to get signed up for that, you just need to drop your uh, name into this Google form, uh, which you should see now uh, on YouTube. It's in the chat. 
uh, in Zoom. It's also in the chat. Uh, so go ahead and go in and drop your names in there. And then we will be spinning the wheel of prizes uh, at the end. And then I'll remind you guys about halfway through. So uh, now let's talk a little bit about Black Friday, Cyber Monday, and what you're going to need to do. Uh, there are a couple of things. One, if any of the sites have uh, their their ads up, you want to go look at them and and start kind of making a list. Now, one of the ways that you can do this, there's there's a couple, uh, but one is bfads.net, and this is one of the best ways to be able to keep your finger on the pulse of which Black Friday ads are out, and we can see that. Walmart today just posted their 32 page Walmart Black Friday ad scan. And it is here. You can look at every single page. You can pull these up. And then the cool thing is that each particular item then becomes clickable. Okay. So we can see that this 50, um, 50 inch 4K TV is going to be 148 bucks. Um, and if we go here to go to store, it's actually going to take us to the listing, okay, on Walmart. And we're not going to see, uh, oh, look at that. We can see the 148 price there, okay? But it shows that they're out of stock. That's interesting. I wonder if they're doing that. Um, I wonder if they're doing that this year. So in the past, it was just, you, uh, you, you saw the current price. So that's interesting. I wonder if, let's see what happens if we go to a, let's go to AirPods, buy these now. That just shows us the regular price. Okay. <clears throat> that's good to know. Okay, so it's not gonna be like that for every single product. So what I would suggest is that you spend some time on bfads.net and uh, go through these ads, all right? Now, this is not something that you can do uh, with tactical arbitrage natively. However, I will tell you that this particular site, uh, bfads.net, uh, you can have an XPath built for it and you can have tactical arbitrage go through it. Uh, the reason I know that is I had it built several years ago and if we go to my TA account, come on, there we go. If we go to my TA account, no, nope, I pulled it out of this one. It's in my other TA account. But bfads.net is in there and you can actually pull against it or uh, pull the products against it. So. It's kind of cool. The reason you're able to do that is because they also list the products down here, which is really nice. Uh, it is just title matches. It's not UPC, uh, but it does make this pretty quick and easy to go through. Uh, however, manual will be the most accurate because you'll be able to go in and do this uh, all on your own. Now, the other place that you can keep an eye out is blackfriday.com. And blackfriday.com also has ads that are out as well, okay? That's funny. Uh, some of these are, look, say, sponsored. But it looks like, uh, looks like a couple of sites or a couple of uh, places actually pay to have their ads show up first. It's really interesting. Uh, you're giving away to – actually, you know what? I'll tell you what. Will has twisted my arm. Uh I will give give away two of the bfads.net xpaths as well. So we'll do two bfads.net xpaths, uh, two TA shirts, three sets of poly bags, um, and uh, two IP alerts. So that's uh, that's a lot. Okay, so we'll do that. <clears throat> All right. So those two places there. Now the other place that you should really be keeping an eye on, and this is a this is a, a new site that I have started to really like is this DealSpotter.com. Uh, and with DealSpotter.com, 
uh, you can go in and actually follow uh, brands and deals and stores. And what I would do is uh, go in and follow all of the stores that you're interested in. Uh, you see, like I've got Glossier and Sierra Trading Post and Adidas. And uh, if you actually put in all the stores that are in Tactical Arbitrage, so for example, if we go, uh, we go to backcountry.com. So let's pull up Backcountry here. Uh, backcountry. We can see that Backcountry store, and now we've got all of their codes. Okay, ten dollars off your cut or off your uh, order. Um, all kinds of things. So now what I do is I follow this. And now that I follow this, uh, it will uh, it'll actually give me updates when new things come out. Okay, so this is, go this is going to be really, really handy uh, all the time, but especially over Black Friday, Cyber Monday, these things start popping off uh, really, really quickly. And then of course, you can use salesgazer.com uh, where you're gonna get all the emails. And that way you kind of have kind of have your finger on everything. You've got your finger in the Black Friday ads. You've got, um, uh, you've got deal spotter showing you things, uh, all kinds of stuff. Uh, guy says, where do we register for the giveaway? I will uh, drop that link again. It's a Google form. James is back. Mac, what's going on? I'm going to drop this Google form over in YouTube again as well. You guys can sign up. We're giving away several things tonight. All right. <laughs> um, so that is really about it. Now, one of the things about tactical arbitrage is you're going to find a lot of sites that have these pop-up uh, sales, especially on Black Friday and Cyber Monday. A lot of them are not necessarily going to work with tactical arbitrage, okay? Let's check out Target and see if they have any of these up right now. Oops. Uh, one place that did this that was really, um, really popular uh, when they were around was um, uh, Toys R Us. When Toys R Us was around, they did all these pop-up sales and uh, they had these special pages uh, where you just couldn't use them with tactical arbitrage. It just wouldn't work. Um, and let's see, shop toy sale. Let's go, let's go here. These ones, it looks like Target should work. You just make sure to use this uh, after the end dash up to the question mark, and that should, should work. Matter of fact, we'll test it out here. Let's see. Now I'll be honest, as much as I love tactical arbitrage, when there are sites that do these um, unscannable sales, it's nice because you can go in and do a little bit of manual sourcing and find items uh, that other people can't, okay? So we can see that this particular toy, this up to 50% off toys, the, uh, the category ID is really different from what it normally is. Okay. So let's test and see if this will actually work with TA. Because if this doesn't work, then there are people out there who are not necessarily sourcing this and you can go do it manually and it is working. And I can tell by the speed it's been searched. So, but it would still be worth your time to go do that. All right. So what other questions do you guys have? Q4 related, Black Friday related. Um, there's, there's not a whole lot. I mean, we've gone over how to run scans and things like that. Um, but I want to make sure that everybody, everybody is confident and ready um, for battle this, uh, this shopping season. And also, what do you need? To, what do you, what do you need to know about right now? Because there's, there's plenty of things that you can be outsourcing right now that people are going to be be buying and and wanting. How do I keep organized? That is <clears throat> that is a great question. Um, I am not the most organized person. 
so most everything is kept in my head. Um, however, when I make orders, I do keep those on spreadsheets until they come in. And then once they are on the shelves and ready to uh, prep, pack, and uh, ship off to Amazon, they go from yellow to red, meaning they've been they've been taken off the shelf and into a box uh, on its way to Amazon. Um, for accounting, I use QuickBooks. Uh, that's the only thing that keeps me. Um, uh, that's the only thing that keeps me somewhat organized because uh, I'm just not. I'm not great at it. Is it worth going to the stores or all OA? So I'll be honest. I I really really like doing retail arbitrage in Q4. Going to Ross, TJ Maxx, uh, Target, Walmart, um, hunting down exclusives, hunting down, um, uh, you know, last season toys that are still doing really well, all kinds of stuff. Um, I really enjoy that. And there's just a ton of money on the table. Now, when it comes to Black Friday, since I don't really like peopling that much, uh, I do it all from the couch. I, I don't, I don't go out into the stores on Black Friday, um, and like a lot of times, Target will have like a 25% off coupon you can get for spending X amount of dollars. Um, if you go into the store on Black Friday, I end up just buying those on on eBay or, or you know, things like that. Um, now, uh, is it worth going to the store? If you plan on being out anyway, absolutely, because you can, what I would suggest though, is if you're going to go into the store, go with a plan. So if you are, if you're just going to buy video games or if there are just certain things that you're looking for, go in with a plan. And then while you're there, also scan the other things. Yeah, Sasha, Black Friday is super people-y and like, I really like all of you guys on the other side of the screen. And I'm sure that I would, I would absolutely love meeting you guys at conferences and things like that. Um, but, uh, but yeah, Black Friday is really people-y and it's not always the, the most fun people. <clears throat> uh, will it be better to do live or cash scans for Black Friday? Uh, if you're gonna be doing some, uh, if you're gonna be doing some smaller scans for Black Friday, I would go live or go like one or three days. Um, you know, you don't necessarily have to do it at 10 days. I'm gonna be honest, <clears throat> people are like, Alex and the dev team, they are just, uh, uh, they're just absolutely crushing, making sure the database and, and the servers are, are working uh, because they're getting just hammered right now. So there's a ton of people scanning. Uh, I mean, it's just that time of year. So even if you used a 10 day cache on a scan, it's most likely that you're gonna get really, really fresh data. Uh, however, if you wanted to do like a live or a two or a three day scan or cache, you could absolutely do that. Uh, it'll still be really fast because the data is so, is just coming in all the time. Uh, and you won't necessarily have to update a lot of it. Any good bolos for the holidays? I mean, I could give you guys like cat. I'm, I'm not going to give a product, you know, but one thing I would suggest is wherever you are, look for, uh, look for seasonal, um, seasonal items that are unique to your area. So for example, in, um, in Florida, uh, from what I read, I don't know this for sure. I don't know enough like long-term Floridians, but from what I understand in Florida for Thanksgiving, what is more, um, what is more popular down here is, uh, um, key lime pie. Okay. Like even more popular than pumpkin pie, which sounds like, sounds like apostasy down here or it's not like it that's just weird to me as as a, an ohioan so but key lime pie is really big down here so there are going to be uh like key lime flavored items that are going to be popular regionally down here 
that someone who moved from Florida to California may really want for their Thanksgiving or their Christmas. So, you know, look for those regional type things that are, uh, yeah, I will, I will blame Jimmy Buffett. Chris Cruz says that we can blame Jimmy Buffett for that. I will blame him. He can take all the blame because I don't like Jimmy Buffett. Um, and I hope he never finds that salt shaker. Um, but, uh, uh, yeah, look for regional type items. And then, I mean, just, just scan. I mean, they're look for items that, you know, are selling this time of year in, I mean, they're everywhere. They're in grocery, they're in I mean, toys, of course. Uh, but, and I've said this over and over again, a rising tide lifts all boats. So think gifts across, um, across the category. Like, you know, I'm not going to buy my wife, uh, action figures. However, uh, I am, you know, she may want, uh, I don't know, uh, uh, an air fryer or, or something like that. So there, there are gifts all across the spectrum that you can look at and, and make profits on. Uh, let's see here. Parking, parking does suck on black Friday. Uh, let's see. <laughs> what do you do when some random is trying to steal your Amazon BFF? You fight for them. Um, will I be doing multiple orders from Target? Will it be flagged? It's possible. If the only thing that I'm ordering is uh, the hot video game that's, you know, $14.99 at Target, and I'm going and I'm ordering 20, and then I'm ordering another 20 and another 20, and I, I buy 100 in total, yeah, I'm going to get flagged. And... I'm curious what's going to happen. Are they going to shut people down completely or are they just going to take away their circle membership or is it going to be a combination of both eventually? Um, so it depends on how you order. I've never been shut down from target, but I'm, you know, I, I really do practice what I preach. And even if something is, well, that's not true. If something is crazy good, I will buy 50 or a hundred units, but, um, but that's typically like something that I replenish on a regular basis. Uh, when it's, when it's these hot items and I'm going in for a quick flip, I really am going wider than I am going deeper. So maybe I order 10 of this video game and 10 of this board game and five of this other item. Uh, I'm typically not trying to, to push my luck with them. Ah, yeah, Chris. Chris made a good point. Uh, regional grocery stores. I won't. I won't name the the grocery store he he named, but um, uh, regional grocery stores may have seasonal items that do well on Amazon. Okay, uh, so like down here, we have a couple of regional stores in uh, in Florida, but like I don't have a Kroger, uh, and I'm used to shopping at Kroger. You know, when I lived in Ohio, and um, uh, you know, out West, they've got Fred Meyer, which is a Kroger, but they've got Safeway and, um, you know, they got hy V in some places and, and all kinds of stuff. So make sure to check those kinds of places too, that may not be on tactical arbitrage. Uh, let's see how deep, uh, do I usually go on items in Q4, particularly November, December? Um, there's a number of, uh, there's a number of things that, uh, that go into that for me. So like, for example, we recently bought, um, I think we're at 200 units right now of a particular seasonal item that I can pick up locally at a store. Um, I, I typically buy them out from this particular store in my, within like 30 miles of me. Okay. Um, and, and I might get, I might be able to push it to 300, but, um, that is an outlier. Typically I'm 10 to 20 units. Like right now there's a bolo that I have at something that we're, we've been on the lookout for at both Ross and TJ Maxx, and we're 30 deep on it right now. We might go to 50 or 60, um, but uh, probably not much deeper than that.
most of the things we're not going more than 10 deep on. Uh, we just sent in some really, we just sent in some really big items, uh, some like play castles or something. And we, we, we only went four deep on those, even though we were bringing it back in stock. Um, Steve, uh, that $500 Dyson device, my wife went and bought it the other day. She, uh, she loves it. Simone got shut down. They labeled you a reseller. There's ways around that. Shoot me an email and, and we could talk about that. <laughs> Frank, you're funny. Uh, I can't, I can't necessarily repeat what you're saying in the, in the chat, but that's funny. Gabriel says only been selling for five months. Um, I've never had a problem selling toys this week. My toys were placed in stranded and now I'm restricted in toys. What should I do? Um, all of the toys were, were stranded and you were restricted in the entire toy category. Um, that's, that's a tough one. You're going to need to do something quickly to get ungated. My suggestion would be to reach out to EE distribution, order something at a loss and get ungated in the toy category. Um, what I worry about in your particular case is since you've been restricted in the toy category for whatever reason, are you, when you get ungated in toys, are you going to be coming up against a bunch of uh, brand restrictions that maybe you have, maybe you have a bunch of Nerf in there. Are you now going to be gated in Nerf as well? Um, so that one's kind of tough. Um, and someone says they think it's because your metrics are bad. Uh, I would be, yeah. And Gabriel, if you need to, you can shoot me an email and I can, I can chat with you about that and try to help you out there. Uh, do you use the same online order quantity rules you use with Target when ordering online from WAGS to prevent getting kicked off? Uh, WAGS, for those of those of you who might be uninitiated, WAGS is Walgreens. Um, so I'll tell you about Walgreens. Um, with Walgreens, I am more careful now than I used to be. I used to order as much as I could. And oftentimes they would limit me to 36 or 39 or, uh, in a couple of cases, 72 units, um, ordering from Walgreens. Well, they kind of figured out what I was doing and they did not ban me from Walgreens. However, they are happy to cancel orders on me if I'm pushing the envelope when it comes to stacking discounts, um, and maybe taking advantage of their, you know, buy one, get one free or buy two, get one free and things like that. Um, so with Walgreens, what I do now is I'm, I'm typically, uh, I'm typically starting to order 12 units. Sometimes I'll push it to 18 units. Uh, and then if they ship that out, then I go back and order again. Uh, realizing that oftentimes their their coupons will only stack maybe two or three times on occasion, so it just uh, it just depends. <clears throat> so you do have to be a little bit more careful with Walgreens, especially depending on how hard you are stacking discounts. Uh, Watermelon 92 says, it always happens around Christmas if you don't sell enough or have, have good enough metrics, they will gate you in toys until after the holidays. That used to be true. Uh, you know, Three years ago, yes, if your metrics were not at a certain place, they would say you can't even sell toys, period. Uh, but they have not done that for a couple of years. Um, so I, I, haven't, I haven't seen an email on that in in a couple of years, they'll let you, they, they will cut you off from doing merchant fulfilled during Q4 and say, Hey, your metrics do not meet our criteria. Or you haven't sold enough merchant fulfilled to sell toys merchant fulfilled. Um, but, uh, uh, typically they'll let you sell FBA, but I remember when that was a big deal. Aaron says you got that email and toys and games this year. Man, I'd love to see it if you still have it.
Steve's got a, uh, Steve has a great, um, thing about Walgreens. You can use guest checkout to use the promo code more than, more than twice on, um, uh, Walgreens. That's a great one. Well, I'm going to get that taken care of probably next week. How long do you keep a listing inactive? Uh, I have a few that returned after deleting a listing and had to remove them from stranded inventory because trying to relist didn't work. Uh, so uh, typically I only, if I sell out of something, uh, I'll give it a week and then I'm deleting a listing, um, you know, maybe two weeks if I don't catch it. Uh, and then I do have returns on occasion that go stranded. I typically don't have a problem relisting it. So I'm curious what may have happened there. I actually, I actually just relisted one um, yesterday that had come back into uh, my stranded inventory that I had deleted. And this was something that should have been returned like 90 days ago that just got just got returned. Um, so, uh, but I didn't have that issue. So I think that's probably a fluke, Christine. That's that's weird. I'm not commingled either. That's very strange. I mean, if, if that's, if that's what's happening to you, I'd probably wait. I'd probably wait 45 days and heck now you have to wait 90 days because we've got the, uh, we've got the Q4 returns. Uh, let's see. Is there a way to get ungated in Costco products? I'm going to be honest with you. And by Costco products, I'm going to guess that you mean Kirkland brand. Um, I don't know because one of the issues is, is you need an invoice and perhaps you can, um, perhaps you can use an invoice online and maybe give it a try uh, or see if they have some sort of invoice that they can give you at the store uh, that kind of shows their address and your address and all those things, but I've never had to do it myself. So I'm not a hundred percent sure if that would work. Um, you're just going to have to give it a shot to be quite honest. Uh, which websites can you get tax, tax exempt on? Uh, there's a ton of them. Uh, Walmart, Best Buy, Home Depot, um, you just have to, you have to check. I, I don't, I don't keep a list of them. Uh, the ones that you're not going to be able to get tax exempt on are Kohl's. Uh, I don't think you can get tax exempt on Walgreens, although I should deal with their chat and see if that's actually possible. Uh, I don't think you can. Um, yeah, there's, yeah, just, I would check with each, each site. Or if you're using a prep center in a tax-free state, then you can you can do that too. Uh, let's see here. Do I recommend merchant fulfilling hazardous products if it has good margins? Uh, yeah, yeah, absolutely. I I sell some mascara merchant fulfilled uh, just because I didn't want to send five units in and pay ten dollars to ship it, so I merchant fulfilled it and. Uh, we made about 10 bucks a unit on it. And yeah, it's, there's nothing wrong with merchant fulfilling hazmat products. Now, if you can uh, get, get yourself approved for the hazmat program and focus on hazmat a little bit more um, because you'll be able to go in and uh, um, sorry, someone was telling me this form doesn't work. It's working for me. And that form is working for me, Roy. Let me let me drop this link one more time here. Um, so, uh, but tr go in, try to get approved for the hazmat program. Uh, that way you can see if uh, you can send them into FBA. And there's going to be a lot of uh, there's going to be a lot of folks who you know, don't use that, um, and are able to sell, sell through things faster. Uh, let's see here. Da, 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 da. Work for you guys.
how do you list toys with batteries? Uh, I'm going to be honest. Most toys with batteries are, are not, um, are not hazmat. A lot of times they're, they're just regular old double a batteries. And it's not a big deal. Uh, but if, once you fill out the hat or the dangerous goods information, you need to be honest. And so if it's got a, uh, you know, if it's got a nickel metal hydride battery or something like that, you need to let them know. And those things may need to be hazmat. Uh, let's see here. Uh, did FBA inventory get more expensive this time of year? Yes. Q4 inventory storage is much more expensive uh, this time of year. And let me see if I can pull this up without actually, I'm going to take this away from you guys for a second. Let me see if I could pull this up without. Hmm. Okay, here we go. Yeah, so inventory storage fees do go up. You can see that January through September, uh, they are 69 cents per cubic foot. Uh, and October to December, they're $2.40 per cubic foot. So they go way, way up. Um, I mean, that's over three times the amount. So yeah, you're going to see a lot, uh, a lot more fees when it comes to storage. However, you should be able to also make that up with uh, increased velocity. Um, yeah, I, I notice that even though the fees are higher, I don't do a lot of long tail items, so I'm not getting a bunch of storage fees, uh, you know, because I'm not having items in there for too awful long. Uh, let's see. Uh, Dan says, I have a big problem. I just switched recently to a professional account uh, with Amazon. I sent products, but all the products are in stranded inventory and I appear to be on vacation. I tried to activate my listings from vacation settings, but nothing works. The funny thing is I can play with active, inactive on Mexican account, but Canadian U.S. are blocked as inactive. So um, vacation does not uh, apply to FBA products. Uh, vacation only applies to merchant fulfilled products. So what I would suggest is, um, man, that's weird. Yeah, I really am probably going to need more information on that, which is probably stuff that you're not going to want to share uh, publicly. Um, you sent in all the products, all the products are stranded. Do you, are there listings actually created? Like, are, and what is the stranded reason? Um, shoot me an email at chris at cleartheshelf.com, uh, Dan, and we can, maybe we can do a screen share or something and, and I can see if I can help you. Uh, but that seems like a weird, a weird issue. Uh, let's see. If you do MF, do you have to ship prime like one day or two day? Uh, so if you're doing merchant fulfilled this time of year, um, do you have to ship prime like one day or two day? So I have it set up so that I can ship prime seller fulfilled prime within my state of Florida. Okay. I don't ship outside the state of Florida and offer prime shipping. Outside the state of Florida, they get, you know, whatever, whatever it is. Okay. I don't charge shipping either. I'm, I'm zero dollars for shipping, um, anywhere in the country. I just eat that. Uh, so I don't buy things where I have to charge, you know, the four ninety nine shipping fee or whatever. Uh, and I just increase my price a little bit. Um, so, uh, but no, you don't have to ship one day or two day, uh, if you're in Florida and have to ship to California, it's not mandatory. Um, my IPI is 526. I had games that I was allowed to list and send in. On October 14, they were placed in Stranded. I opened a case and was sent the Q4 toy requirements, although I am only FBA. I was wondering if it was related to Q4 and then would I be allowed to sell again in Q1 
from what you said, it sounds like that may have happened. Uh, again, Ted, that's possible. Uh, I would be curious, like your IPI was 526. That's, that is better than the 400 that they require or are going to require. I think that's going into effect now or very soon. Um, so your IPI, I've never seen it affect someone being able to sell in Q4. So I'd love to, I'd love to, um, figure out what's going on there. Uh, Roy, since you can't seem to get that Google form up, I will make sure that your name is in the list here. Okay. Uh, let me go to questions. Matter of fact, we will do it right now. Maybe. <clears throat> I'll make sure your name gets in there. Oh, it's not going to let me do it here. Oh, well, I will, uh, I'll get you taken care of. <clears throat> uh, let's see here. Do you have your inventory listed in other marketplaces like Mexico and Canada? Um, also, what are your thoughts on expanding to Europe or the Middle East? Um, I used to have my products listed in uh, Mexico and... <laughs> Uh, I sold like one year when Super NES was out. I had like 20 of these Super NESs and five or six of them went to Mexico and five of them disappeared in customs. Uh, and then, of course, I was out the money because the people did not get their products and um, they were uh, they were very upset. So I stopped selling in Mexico. Uh, I have not listed anything in Canada. Uh, I know that the marketplace just isn't, isn't that big. Uh, it wouldn't hurt, I guess. Uh, but they've also got Amazon.ca. I, I just don't know how many people are ordering from the U.S. Uh, now, my thoughts on expanding to Europe or the Middle East. If you think that you have maxed out what you can do in the U.S., uh, then I would definitely suggest looking at other marketplaces like the UK, the EU, or the Middle East, uh, or Australia, or something like that, um, because those those markets are still growing. I mean, the US is still a growing market for Amazon, but not at the pace at which other markets are growing. However, I think that you would do yourself a disservice by fragmenting your focus to multiple marketplaces, especially marketplaces where you're going to have to deal with logistics of getting products from the U S to these other countries and into an Amazon fulfillment center. If you have not completely streamlined your operation here in the U S and are maxing out what your capabilities are. Anyway, that's, that's my two cents. If you are to the point where you're selling a couple million on Amazon US and you're like, you know what, I'm I'm going to Europe, absolutely do it. I've got a buddy and he um, he absolutely crushes it in the US and he sells on other marketplaces as well and does well over there. Um, but like he is a big seller. He's multi, multi-million dollar seller every year. If you don't have API keys from Walmart and you use Easy Bulk to scan the website, are the categories limited to 25 pages like when you enter the categories manually? Yes, they are. Absolutely. Uh, let's see here. Could you please show how to add an ASIN into TA for out of stock reverse search auto updates? Um, yeah. We can we can do that real quick. So let me. Uh, I have to take TA off the screen for a moment. Okay. Let me make sure that is the case, and I'm not sharing something that I shouldn't. Perfect. Okay. So unfortunately, you guys see a blank screen for just a second. I need to go into my settings. All right, 
let me throw this back on the screen. So uh, the question is, can you show how to add an ASIN into TA for out of stock reverse search auto updates? So the first thing that you need to do is you need to go into your settings and go to the notifications tab. Make sure that you have these turned on. I've got my email in there. I've got my phone number in there. Uh, please don't sell that phone number or put it on Craigslist. Um, I have uh, email notifications turned off. I have uh, SMS notifications turned on. I do not have my text message notifications muted, uh, much to the chagrin of my wife, because I will get texts at three in the morning and uh, it's, uh, it's just TA. Uh, use sound notifications on my computer. I've got that turned on. And then if you, if you do decide to turn on email, I would, uh, you could attach the download data to the notification email, uh, which will just give you a log via email, and that's fine. The second place you're gonna need to go to, make sure to hit save, always hit save. Next place you're gonna go to is auto updates. And what you wanna do from here is you want to enable product and reverse saved list auto updates and alerts. And you need to select the folders you want to be updated. Now you're going to need to remember uh, that it is, it's limited, okay? Like you can only have so many items uh, auto updated. So for example, this, if I chose this target replen scan, um, then I'm gonna be limited to zero times per day. It's just too many, okay? Uh, however, if I do this scanned items to be rechecked and choose that, then I could update it up to four times per day, okay? Uh, and the numbers are in here. You can see for a selection of over 4,000 products, auto update won't work. Uh, 3,000 to 4,000, you can update one time per day. So now to see a folder over here, there's going, it's going to need to be a folder in your saved list that's created and has items in there, okay? So you're gonna wanna, if you have something if you have just one item, move it into a folder that you want to be checked and make sure that there is at least one item in there so that shows up here, all right? Then what you're gonna wanna do is set up your notifications. Uh, in this particular case, I want to be notified if the ROI is over, say, 50%. I want to know when it's in stock. Uh, I do not have the estimated sales greater than anything because I'm only saving items that I'm interested in anyway. Uh, and then I only want to be alerted when products satisfy both the ROI, the in stock and the estimated sales criteria. Uh, and I want to use set discounts for all saved product updates. So for example, if I have a standing 10, 5% discount at target, this is a good example. I have a standing 5% discount with my red card. And then I also can, um, you know, maybe get another discount somewhere else and I have those saved, then it's going to use those discounts for target, okay? Uh, and you can set those discounts here. Now on the auto update view data, you can update positive ROI products as they are added in view data if the last update is older than 12 hours. So what this is going to do is if you turn this on, when an item is taken from uh, a scan and put into your view data, if the la latest update, if you're using 10 day cash, for example, and the last update was, you know, 36 hours ago, then this will auto update that before it goes in there. I would highly suggest that you turn this on, okay? Uh, everybody who's watching should turn this particular uh, little feature on in the update section. And then hit save, okay? Now, once you have this all set up, all you have to do is go to your saved list and take an item, and we'll take an item from, um, oh, let's see here. We'll take an item from this review folder
sorry, it's running a little slow. There we go. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to select this first item here, and I am going to uh, move it to that scanned items to be rechecked, move to folder. And that will make it so that that item will be auto updated four times per day. And then I'll be alerted if it fits my criteria. And that's all there is to it. All right, let me pull that up here. Uh, let's see. Category manually. Perfect. Okay. All right. I got a bunch of questions over here. I forgot. Answer that. Answer that. Uh, Kai. Hi, Chris. I'm from Canada. I don't have a prep center sign up in the U.S. Do you think that any of them would accept a new customer at this time so I can have the store send the products to them if I can find the good deal in Black Friday sales? Do you have any suggestion for prep centers I should contact? Um, yes. So what I would suggest is uh, you're probably going to have to reach out to several of them, Kai. Uh, because it is a busy time of year. Uh, so there, there were some that were in the news today, Central Montana Prep and Pack, Seller Tech, and these other ones in Montana. Uh, Prime Zero Prep, it's probably going to be hard to get into. Uh, there are some out in Oregon. So my suggestion would be to reach out to several and see who will accept people this time of year because it is – it is an especially busy time of year to be getting in with a prep center. And my suggestion is that if you don't plan on using a prep center all year long, then, um, then I would suggest getting in with them before Q4 starts. Uh, Zoom group chat. Okay, I can see that. Uh, can you repeat again how to get ungated in Costco brand Kirkland? Uh, again, uh, I don't know for sure if that is going to, uh, if you're going to be able to get ungated with a, like a Costco invoice. So what I would suggest is that you go talk to somebody at Costco and say, hey, listen, I would really like to uh, be able to get some sort of invoice and see if that will work. I've, I've never had to do it. So I'm just, I just don't know. But I would go talk to a manager or someone at the front end. Hector, I purchased some product through a wholesaler and my invoice got denied multiple times. So one of the things I would suggest is there's got to be something that they, they didn't like that can be fixed. Maybe the address didn't match up or you know, something. But my suggestion is, is to keep trying with that invoice or giving Amazon what they're asking for. Maybe they're asking for a CPC or, or something to go along with that invoice. But I would keep trying until they relent. OK, um, it used to be back in when I for, when I went and got ungated in things like Star Wars and these other brands that I wanted to get ungated in, um, I would. <laughs> so I sent in my my invoice uh, twice and they they denied me both times. And then on the third time I said, I said, OK, listen, I said, I know that I've done everything by the book. I'm giving you exactly what you want and you guys have denied me. So please take a look at this closely and please, you know, and I was like, please approve this proper invoice and ungating. And that time worked. And Will says it took him four different tries one time. Like sometimes you just have to be um, harder headed than the folks at Amazon. Now, are there any videos out there for tactical arbitrage that will help me find legit authorized suppliers? So I want to say it was last week or the week. No, last week was replens. The week before um, was uh, all about wholesale on tactical Thursday. And what we did is I showed a method of finding products that would be of interest to us um, to reach out to. Now, I would not necessarily go out and say, hey, I just want to find distributors. I would suggest trying to go directly to the brands first 
And if the brands say, no, we don't open up wholesale accounts, then I would say, hey, do you have any distributors that I might be able to contact? For example, Hasbro is a brand that everyone's like, oh, well, you're never going to be able to get an account with them. Supposedly, there are ways. However, if you call their 800 number and say, hey, I am interested in getting a wholesale account with Hasbro, they will happily point you toward distributors in your region. Okay, so there's always more than one way to, to skin a cat. Um, but what I would suggest is actually look for brand owners that you can go and talk to and then open up conversations with them, build relationships. Uh, don't just, you know, we don't want to just take the shotgun approach and find as many uh, distributors as we can. We want to get as close to um, it coming off the manufacturing line as possible uh, in most cases. And Will says it took him four different tries once to get ungated, uh, you know, try to submit it after 12 a.m. Eastern, which is, you know, I don't know 100% if that's the case or not, but uh, it's, it's very possible that dealing with people after midnight may get you a different answer than the daytime folks. Uh, let's see, answered that one. All right. A watermelon 92 says it took him three times, uh, to get out of Nike. I mean, it just, yeah, it just, it just, it does just take some hard headedness. It's all, all about, I've said it in the past, you got to embrace the suck. And that's one of the things that really sucks is, is those people don't always look at, um, at the invoices like they should. All right. Uh, what other questions you guys have? And I want to make sure everybody's had a chance to I just realized I messed that up. All right. Uh, how can you tell when you get an order from a brand owner that will likely complain and threaten uh, to file A to Z claims? Um, well, anymore, uh, it's it's pretty difficult because you like don't get addresses any longer. So you know it used to be. Uh, it used to be that you could go and uh, get the address uh, of a, a customer and then you could do a reverse search on it. And I knew people who would reverse search every single address for every order that they had, which that sounds mind numbing to me, but they would do it. Um, and I did it on a few things, you know, I, like one of those super NESs that went to Mexico, uh, went to Mexico City uh, and I was like, oh, I was like, this is interesting. They paid like, they paid like a $400 for it in, in Mexico. And it was an insane price. So I looked up, you know, where it was going and it was this huge mansion in, in Mexico city. And I was like, oh, cool. now that makes sense. Um, and, uh, and so it was, yeah, you really can't know anymore whether a brand owner is likely going to complain and threaten to file an A to Z claim. If you're dealing with them directly, then, then they shouldn't have a problem with you. Although there is a, uh, there is a horror story out right now about um, people who only do wholesale and they've had a bunch of brands cut them off and now they've been suspended, but I'm going to guess that there's more to that story. Uh, have I tried Dollar Tree for resale? Yeah, absolutely. Dollar Tree, uh, Dollar Tree's got some good stuff, especially this time of year and Halloween. And uh, there's lots of things there that you can you can sell. It's not the biggest profits all the time, but uh, you can find a lot of stuff that's 100% ROI. Uh, you know, make a buck or two on it. Yeah. Is there a way to find items? Uh, that don't have a sales rank, but actually may sell using Keepa? Um, yeah, that's a great question. Is there a way to find items that don't have a sales rank, 
but actually might sell using Keepa. Yes, there is a way. Um, there is a way to do that. Okay. However, um, I have a section in Tactical Arbitrage Academy that is all about uh, Keepa and what you can do with it. Uh, and unfortunately, that is something that I promised I would keep inside of Tactical Arbitrage Academy uh, because there are some there are just some crazy ninja things that you can do that I, I don't give out uh, uh, to the general public because um, some folks have paid me a, a, a fair amount of money to, to learn things I don't share with everybody. So I'm sorry, I can't, uh, I can't show you that. Frank, you need that address for the free hug? If you, uh, you make it down to Florida, man, uh, and shoot me, shoot me an email, I'll give you my address. I got, I got all kinds of free hugs. Uh, let's see here. Is there a way to use tactical arbitrage to buy new books? Uh, when I run a product search, it mainly gives me used books. Um, yeah, pr well, product search is the only way to find new books. The library search is going to be used books. That's, that's just all it, all it is for. Uh, my question is, is what site are you running a product search on? Uh, because the site will need to have new books. But if it's product search, you're only going to get the buy box on the, on, in new if you're looking for books. And I'll be honest, I'm not sure that I would sell new books because yeah, if it's not plastic wrapped and 100% perfect, it's pretty easy to get, com get a complaint about that. Will says Dollar Tree and Dollar General is a waste of time. Uh, let's see here. Uh, I keep hearing EE is good for ungating in toys. Is there a supplier that will do this for OTC and supplements? Um, Don, uh, yeah, shoot me an email and I can probably point you in the right direction uh, for somebody with OTC and supplements. On Walgreens, how do you work around any bans? How to work the points? How to do $50 off per purchase? How to take advantage of TA with Walgreens gift cards? Walgreens gift cards do not work online. So what you can do is you can run Walgreens or you can want, run TA scans on Walgreens and then go in the store with your Walgreens gift cards. I used to do that on a fairly regular basis. Uh, that would also work around any bans that you might have, but I've never seen Walgreens like outright ban somebody. They might say, Hey, listen, you're only going to get this many when you order, uh, how to work the points. I don't necessarily go in and look to maximize the points. Uh, like I'm not going to go and buy the toothpaste. That's 6,000 points this week just to get the points. Uh, you know, and then there's a coupon where I, end up, you know, the toothpaste is free after I use the points. Uh, I'm, I'm just not going to do that. But what I do 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 is I allow the points to accumulate. It's pretty easy to do. A lot of, you know, a lot of the supplements and things that I like to sell end up having higher point values a lot of times for the, um, uh, throughout the, the weeks and months. Uh, and then once the points are up there, I just use them. That's, that's all. Yeah, Frank says, hell no on new books. I, yeah, I can, I completely understand. Um, when I scan target, even though I put remove out of stock, I always find items that are out of stock. Is there a way to prevent that? <laughs> Excuse me. Uh, with 100% accuracy, no. But what I would do is... Uh, let's say, for example, uh, this. Okay, this shows in stock right now. Uh, so, like, I would run a scan, okay, and then I would move your items to another folder and then refresh all the items, okay? So, you know, like this particular item, it says it's in stock right now. Uh, if we refresh this item, it says that it's still in stock, and, um, and we see that that is, let's see here. I'm on target. 
That is true. So it's still in stock. So what I would do is I would get some items into a view say, a view folder. I would hit the refresh on all of them, okay? And if, they, if they're saying they're in stock, it's probably because the data is a little bit old or something like that. And then once you refresh everything, you can use this on-page filter and you could say, I only wanna see the items that show yes for in stock. That is the best thing to do. Uh, let's see here. What do you re recommend to, to new sellers that are gated to a lot of categories? Lindsay, that's a great question. Uh, so when you are gated in a lot of categories and brands, um, this is going to sound harsh and I don't mean it to, but suck it up and push through. Uh, eventually they will become ungated either automatically or because you decide to get an invoice or whatever. However, there are, um, let's take a look here. Um, there are, as of August, man, I got to update this. I really got to get this taken care of. In the U.S., there are a total of 314 million products that are tracked by Keepa on Amazon that are for sale. Uh, and there has got to be at least one one hundredth of one percent that you could sell on there. Uh, and if that's the case, that still should be enough to make a fairly good amount of money. So... I get that it sucks. I remember being new and not having a lot of things to be able to sell. Uh, but if you push past, then you should be able to find some items. And then as you get a little bit of sales history under your belt, as you get um, you know, a little bit of account history, then things should start becoming ungated. But one thing that I would always suggest that you do is make sure that you're asking to be ungated every single time you come across a gate because you never know when one's gonna gonna let you through um and again that was not meant to be rude uh it's just it's part of the it's it's paying your amazon dues if you will they want to make sure that, that you get some history under your belt and watermelon 92 says sell books uh absolutely i will be completely honest we we were making a fair fairly good income just selling books before we really got into uh retail arbitrage and online arbitrage um you know we had like four thousand books in stock at one point uh and it was a good amount of it, i mean it was a good income it was it was nice um and you can still do it that way you can you can go hit library sales and uh and thrift stores and all those places you know, look on Facebook Marketplace, look on Craigslist, uh, offer to take books, um, uh, take books, you know, out of people's houses that they don't want anymore uh, and sell those. Uh, selling books is, is just great. Selling used books when you're a new seller, you don't get the buy box, so it is hard to sell unless I'm missing something. Um, yeah, that's what we used to, we, Watermelon, we used to buy Gaylords of books and throw them in my garage uh, six at a time. Uh, yeah, you may not get the used buy box, but with used books, it's different. A lot of times people are going in and looking at the lowest price. So one of the things that you're going to have the advantage of is a lot of times the used book buy box very well may be a merchant fulfilled seller because they're, you know, a penny or a dollar plus $4.99 shipping because their cost, the cost of goods is so low that they're just making it up by sending it media mail. So the, the advantage that you have by actually using FBA is that you can send these books in, you can charge a realistic amount of money. Maybe it's seven or ten or fifteen dollars, and uh, and you're you're selling it prime, 
So like, I'll be honest, if I go and buy a book on, like I typically read on my Kindle now, but if there are things that I want that are not on Kindle, then I go in and I only buy prime used books. Uh, and that's just, that's it. It doesn't matter if there's a, Uh, it, yeah, it doesn't matter if there's a uh, uh, not a prime buy box seller. And book buyers know. They know. Uh, yeah, it is possible not to be buy box eligible or used buy box eligible with used books for a time. But that goes away pretty quick, too. Uh, I would like to request you release your Academy deal early. So maybe we'll have a chance to do on Q4. Uh, let me talk to Nate um, and I'll see what we can do. I found a hardback book with 100% ROI and just two sellers. Should I box it to make sure it stays in good condition? Not sure how Amazon warehouses sell or handle goods. Um, so for me, uh, it depends on what the price point is of the book. If it's a $20 book, I'm, I'm not going to box it. Uh, I'm going to, th and I may not even throw a $20 book in a poly bag. Uh, it's just going to go in a box and that's it. Now we've had books, uh, we've had hardback coffee table books where we sold for two or $250 and those get bubble wrapped and poly bagged and then sent in because I do want those to stay in good condition. Typically, I'm probably not going to box a book, but I would uh, bubble wrap it and, uh, and poly bag it to keep it nice. I recently, I had, a, I had a double of books in my own book collection, uh, and the book was, it's, it's a $100 book, and I sold my extra one, uh, and that one just went into a poly bag. Yeah, Frank says, don't worry about the buy box. List books, list books, list books. Matter of fact, I, I think that next year, I think I'm going to buy, or I think I'm going to hire a book scouter. I wouldn't mind. I, I kind of miss selling books. Uh, da, 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 da. She starts selling in home. and Yeah, yeah. Home and kitchen and baby products can be good places to get started if you're gated and a lot of other things. Um. Yeah, some baby products are going to be restricted. Home and kitchen should be a little bit wider open. Uh, you know, tools. Um, trying to think of what else. Tools should be a little. I mean, you're going to get brand restrictions there. Uh, but yeah. Uh, let's see here. Chris is a discount code. For, I do not have a discount code for Scout IQ. Uh, what do you think about the trade-in feature? Have I done it? Uh, okay. So, uh, Paul is, sorry. I hope that, I hope that's your name, Paul. Um, so asking about the trade-in feature of like buying a used book on, uh, from a merchant fulfilled seller and then trading it into Amazon. Uh, I don't know how viable it is anymore. I haven't done it in a really long time, but for a while, uh, you could buy a book for a penny plus three ninety nine 99 shipping. So I got four bucks into it and uh, then maybe trade it into Amazon for $15 and get a gift card. Um, I'm not necessarily the biggest fan of getting all my money in just Amazon gift cards. Uh, so I didn't do it a lot, but I did it on several occasions, especially just to learn about it and try it out. So I would not necessarily consider it uh, something that is viable long-term, because then what are you going to do? Are you, are you just going to spend that on products for yourself or are you going to flip those into visa gift cards and then use the visa gift cards? Uh, are you going to take the Amazon gift cards and sell them on a marketplace? Um, you know, I, it just, it just seemed like a big headache to me. So I didn't really do it very much. Now you could, if you found some really good ones, you could do that. And then you could buy, uh, Amazon to Amazon flips and then send those back into Amazon and sell those for a profit. Um, but I don't know. I, I don't know. It just wasn't, wasn't ever super appealing to me. 
All right. A couple more questions, and then we'll give some stuff away. I'll tell you what, before I do these other questions, I do want to make sure everybody has the opportunity to uh, get some free stuff. So I'm going to drop this uh, link one more time. Shorten this URL up here. Uh, if you want it, we are giving away a bunch of stuff tonight. We got tactical, uh, one tactical academy, a couple of bfads.net expaths for tactical arbitrage, tactical arbitrage shirts, uh, two copies of IP alert, uh, and then poly bags from ilovesupplies.com as well. Uh, can you share with me what would you do when opened an account with a brand? They told me I am the I am the only authorized seller besides Amazon, but on Amazon website. Other many sellers send this product. Also, Amazon break map price. Uh, okay, so it sounds like it sounds like you're authorized to sell on Amazon from a brand, but other sellers are breaking map price. Well, the other sellers are are probably not breaking map price because you have to agree to map uh, to go and break map price. So you're probably competing against um, arbitragers, okay? So my suggestion would be for you to work with the brand. Uh, you should work with the brand and say, hey, listen, do you wanna be able to keep these other sellers off of your listing? and then get the item uh you know brand registered and get it gated and things like that there's there's all kinds of things that you can do so they can protect their brand uh especially if they do it the right way okay and that would be going through the the brand gating process and getting brand registered okay uh or using the transparency program if if they're a big enough brand uh, so I would suggest going through those channels, walking them through it, becoming their trusted ally and showing them that you know what you're talking about. Uh, and, uh, and then you're, you're going to have that relationship for a long time. Uh, it seems that Amazon processes our shipments to the warehouse longer. Is this true? I'm not a hundred percent. Oh, let's see here. Sent a shipment in. It got to Amazon October 24th. They said they'll start working on it tomorrow. Um, that seems a little slow. Some warehouses are slower than others. So yes, check-in times do take longer this time of year. Uh, that is absolutely because they are getting they are just getting hammered. I got a friend of mine shared a picture of a prep center. So a prep center is someone who's taking in products from sellers like us, prepping, packing, and then shipping them out to Amazon. And their warehouse was just slammed. It was jam packed full, floor to ceiling, uh, with every possible space just packed with boxes of boxes. So now multiply their I don't know, two or 300 clients and multiply that. Um, yeah, Roy, I got you. I'll, I'll add your, your name to the, to the wheel. Uh, multiply that by a million or how many ever active on Amazon selling right now. Uh, and Amazon just getting absolutely slammed. So it does slow down. Uh, although October 24th to now, that seems like a long time. Uh, let's see here. Yeah. So you've sent items. So he sent items after those and they've, they've been checked in and sold. So it sounds like there's something wrong. Uh, maybe they misplaced it. You know, it could be, I mean, waiting this long for it to have not been checked in and other items have been, then it's very possible that it's just been misplaced and maybe it's going to be closed and ready for reconciliation tomorrow. So maybe you're going to be getting uh, reimbursed. That, that could be what it is. All right, excuse me. Okay, let's close this down. All right, let's. Da, 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 da. 
They say they haven't received any units of an item and it's not eligible for reconciliation. Um, you need to you need to fight them on that, okay? Uh, if you have tracking numbers and they show it's been received and you can show all of that, then you need to fight them, okay? Deal with the concerned team or, um, you know, get the captive team on the line or whatever. But especially if it's like a, a real amount of money, I've got a reimbursement I got to get uh, they're kind of fighting me on it, but it's it's like 75 units of fairly expensive product. So I'm I'm going to get my money because they lost it. Yes, that, yeah. So I would squabble with them over $1,600 uh, and take it take it up the chain. Okay. If you have proof that you sent it in, and you have proof that you bought it, then don't give up on it. All right. Let's give some stuff away. Let me grab Roy. You got on here, man. Roy B. You're in here, dude. All right. So uh, let's see. The first thing that we're going to give away today is let's do um, how oh, this did this to me earlier. Shoot, this wheel of names decided to uh, to cut off my uh, Chrome browser earlier. So, gonna need to uh, gonna need to restart this real quick. So that looks fine. Okay. Come on. Well, we will give some stuff away here in just a moment. Ah, uh, okay. All right, let me open up uh, let me open up Google Chrome again. I'll share the screen so we can get some winners on here. Come on. I gotta find out if Wheel of Names has a uh, has a Chrome extension or something. Make make things a little bit easier. Let me go grab this. Uh... I missed some of the webinar. Is there a way to view it again? This is live on the YouTube's. Uh, matter of fact, if you're over on YouTube's uh, while I am uh, um, while I'm getting this giveaway all taken care of, uh, please smash that like button. Uh, it's for the YouTube algorithm does knock that up uh, in the YouTube searches and uh, also helps my ego just a touch makes me want to make keep making these videos so I would appreciate it but Alan uh, this is live on uh, YouTube so it will always be there it is just my name Christopher Grant uh, you can also search tactical Tuesday or tactical Thursday uh, and it will show up And giveaway. All right, let me grab these names and we should be good to go. All right, so first up, I think we will do the poly bags. Um, we'll do the poly bags on. Um, to give away here. I mean, you know what? Shuffle these names up here. Shuffle them up a few times. There we go. All right. So we'll do the poly bags um, to give away. We got three of them to give away tonight. And oh, I need to share my screen again. Let me share. Is it that one? Nope, it's this one. Let me share that screen. 
All right. So the winner of the poly bags this evening is Matthew J. Matthew J. Um, you win some poly bags. So make sure to shoot me an email at chris at clear the and I'll get you taken care of with the poly bags. Going to need your address uh, and so on so we can get those out. The next winner for poly bags is. <clears throat> Sasha M. Sasha, if you will shoot me an email at Chris at clear the I will get you actually Jonathan from I love supplies.com will get you a hundred poly bags. So make sure to shoot me an email and I will get you taken care of. Uh, Frank says he wants a new car. I will see what we can do about that, uh, about giving away a new car <clears throat> one of these weeks. Uh, let's see here. The third and final winner of the poly bags is Louis P. Uh, Louis P, please uh, shoot me an email and we will make sure that you get the 100 poly bags as well. Um, next up, let's do uh, two tactical arbitrage t shirts. Uh, of course, the size and color of your choosing. I will personally buy them uh, from, um, Amazon and have them shipped to you. Ah, Sasha. Yeah. Congratulations. That's awesome. Uh, so the tactical arbitrage t-shirt, Aaron M you shoot me an email at Chris at clear the I'll get you a t-shirt and the second winner of a tactical arbitrage shirt is Eric B. Eric B., if you want to shoot me an email as well, I will get you taken care of. And let's do, let's see, what, uh, oh, yeah, um, bfads.net xpath. I'll do a bfads.net. We'll do two of these, the bfads, bfads.net xpath. And then, of course, um, I, will, uh, I will make sure that you know how to install it and use it and all that stuff. Uh, so the first winner of the bfads.net xpath is da, 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 da. Maria B. Maria B. If you want to shoot me an email, I will get you uh, that xpath and a video on how to install it. And the second winner of the xpath is going to be. Driss, Driss, if you want to shoot me an email as well, I will get you that XPath also. Um, we will give away, uh, let's do one or two um, IP alerts. <laughs> Brian R, shoot me an email. Uh, shoot me an email and I will get you taken care of with a copy of IP alert. And let's see, Will says, what about giving away a week as CG's friend? That is not a great prize. Uh, Don C, Don C, you get a copy of IP alert as well. And the last one is going to be Tactical Arbitrage Academy. I will give away one free membership to TA Academy. Uh, let's see here. Henry T. Henry T., if you would like to get into Tactical Arbitrage Academy, it's going to be on the house. So if everybody will shoot me an email uh, at chris at clearthelf.com, I will get you all taken care of uh, as the winners this week. Um, also, please shoot me an email if you have ideas uh, for show topics. I want to make sure that everybody gets their questions answered. Everybody has um, as much help as they, as I can give um, so that we can keep this going. Uh, and if you have ideas for uh, prizes to give away or anything else we can do to make this uh, a fun Thursday evening, I would greatly appreciate it. So feel free to blow up that inbox, shoot me PMs and things like that. 
Um, thanks again for everybody being here again. One last time, please murder that like button. I would greatly appreciate it. Uh, and I will see you guys next Thursday uh, for the last round of Tactical Thursday before Thanksgiving. Um, and uh, and then we'll have a Thanksgiving and be back right after that. So have a great week, guys. Good selling. I hope you're crushing Q4. And I'll see you here, same time, same place, next Thursday.